Hi, Linda Sessions here, and we are getting ready for week five in computer applications. And this week, you are continuing on in Word. What I want to ask you to do first, though, is to make sure you check your grades. Now, the, the, over the weekend, I will be sending out text to students who are making a uh, D or lower in the class and letting you know that this is what's happening. Uh, the end of November, I'm not sure what the date is, it's in your syllabus, is the last day to drop the class. So you want to make sure that you're, you know what your grade is and you want to check the grades in all of your classes. So let's do a review on how you can check your grade in your Canvas class. So here in your class, let me switch to a view as student so you can see what's going on here. Right over here, uh, you're going to have a list, and if you click on grades, it's going to bring up the grades that you have. And I have changed all of the grades to points. And there's a reason I've done that, and I'll get to that in just a second. So instead of seeing a percentage, you're going to see your points, what you got on uh, points out of your grades. If something is missing, it's going to say missing. Um, everything through Excel should have been turned in by now. So if you didn't get an Excel assignment turned in, it's going to be a zero. So... Um, make sure that you watch the due dates going on out. So here you can see the fourth discussion board. I haven't turned that in. I haven't done anything. Of course, it's not due till the 12th. And you can see uh, in this particular class, uh, then it has the fifth discussion board and the event flyers. I need to go in and clean up this grade book. It's every time I go into Canvas, it seems like it moves stuff around on me. It's driving me crazy. So I am learning Canvas this semester too and uh, learning all sorts of new tips and tricks. And I do apologize if it's confusing to you. I'm trying to do my best to make it easy. But all of the assignments that are due on the 19th are put together here. Um, down at the very bottom, you are going to see your overall score. So, um, as a test student, I always give myself full points. So I've got 305 out of 305. You're going to be able to see how many points you have. Now, if I come back in to the class, in module or um, you're going to see a new page called Points Available in CED 115. And so if you click on that, it's going to let you know that overall is 991 points available. And through Excel, it's 300 points. And then you have week four and five, which is we're in right now. 200 points, and so forth and so on. It also lets you know what the grading scale is. So you can look here and you can see, wow, through Excel, I only have 215 points. If I want to get an A, I have to get up to 891 points. And I only have, what, 600 points um, left available to me to get. What do I need to do to make sure I get the score that I want? So you can come in here and you can see exactly what you need to do, what the possibility is in order to make the grade that you want in the class. Um, so reach out if you have any questions on this. And um, I was thought I'd try it this way just so you could see a visual of where you're at in class point-wise. Sometimes percentage is nice. But um, sometimes points makes it a little easier to exactly see, well, what do I need to do? Now, remember here um, in Word 4 and 5, this week, 
the SAM assignments, you've got three left in class. There's two in Word and one in PowerPoint, and that's worth 150 points. Remember, you can redo those and resubmit them. So there's 150 points that you know if you put the time in and you pay attention to the details, you can get 150 points off of those. Just have to take the time to do it. So if you have any questions about the points, uh, if it's not making any sense, please reach out and let me know. This is um, something I'm, well, hopefully it'll make it more understandable to you to know where you are at in the class. And again, if you're making a D or lower in the class, then you will be receiving a text from me sometime over the weekend letting you know exactly where you're at in the class. All right, so week four. Uh, what's your favorite website? I've had fun reading them over. I haven't graded any of them yet, but I've been reading them and I have a list of websites I'm going to check out. So thank you for doing that. Make sure you post that. That is due November 12th. Now the um, assignments, creating a mo and modifying a flyer and uh, modifying the research paper aren't due until November 19th, but do not wait. These particular assignments might take you an hour to an hour and a half to do a piece. So do not wait to do them. Go ahead and get them done this week. You also have the quiz. Now here in week five, we got some fun stuff going on here. Um, Want to know what you think about Microsoft Word? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Um, It's not my favorite program, but I once you learn how to use it and get around with it, it will do so much and it will make your life so much easier. There is a text here on reading word tips. And in this text right here, it's something that I've put together with information I found on um, gcflearnfree.org. And it is... Uh, information on Microsoft OneDrive, which a lot of you already use, but here's some more information on it. Um, how to do a screenshot, translating the text. I love this part in Word. It just fascinates me how easy it is to translate text. And a lot of companies are using Microsoft Word. You can translate the text. Uh, I don't know how many languages, but there's tons of different languages. So right in here, it talks about that. Linking. You've already done links in Excel, but do you realize you can link within a document? Kind of cool. How to create a table of contents in Word. Now in your research paper, you created a works cited list. This week you're going to be doing a table of contents. So, um, so I said if you do the assignments in the order that they're listed in the modules, that's going to make more sense to you. So here's uh, steps on how to create that table of contents in Word. Uh, working with columns. We don't really do that, but there might be some questions on the quiz. Uh, working with columns in Word is a lot of fun to do and then formatting pictures. All of that information is um, right here in the Word Tips folder. Moving on down in the module, you've got your assignment, the Word Event Flyer. For this flyer, um, there is a video where I go over it. Now, I don't go literally step by step by step by step on how to do this because I want you to create a flyer for your event. I want you to learn the skills that you've learned in creating that flyer in Word Module 1 and the information in the e-text on formatting shapes and pictures and moving stuff around 
adding, uh, formatting the text, adding a page border, all of that. And I want you to create your own flyer. And it can be a flyer on anything. Just do not copy my Halloween Festival flyer. You will get points deducted if it looks similar to mine. It can be a Halloween flyer if you want, but don't just copy mine. I want you to do your own work. And it can be anything. It can be a real event. It can be a made-up event. I've had students do a cheese festival on Mars. I've had people do underwater tea party event with Nemo. Um, I had one one semester and they did a free oil exchange for veterans at NCAT and it was absolutely fantastic. Um, so make it as simple or as elaborate as you want. Here are the instructions. I tell you right here what I am looking for. Um, here is an example. It doesn't have to be in this order. Maybe you want your flyer to look completely different. You want your picture at the top and your title at the bottom. I don't know. Think about when you're walking down a hallway and you're looking at a bulletin board and a flyer for an event and it catches your eye. What does it look like? What makes it stand out? I actually think I put too much text on this particular flyer. Um, you want your flyer to grab your reader's attention, but it's got to have the basic information on it. So um, don't go too overboard with the text, but make sure people know what it is, where it is, when it is, and make sure you put some uh, pictures. I've got a picture here of a haunted house. I've got... Um, moon shape with some with colors and then i think this is a ghost icon is what i have on here so have some fun with it make it your event flyer maybe you're going to do a thanksgiving dinner i don't know um the next assignment in for this week is one that I hope you have some fun doing as well, and that is creating a cookbook. And with this particular assignment, uh, there again is a video on it. I um, want you to download this recipes data file. So you're going to click on that, open this up, and you might have to enable editing. You're going to start out with these recipes. Okay. You are going to be adding four additional recipes in two additional areas. So I've already added uh, some main dishes here and I've added some breads. So those are two of the areas. You need to come up with recipes in two additional areas, maybe desserts maybe soups, appetizers, drinks. Um, you're going to need uh, some additional recipes for this assignment. And you're also going to need pictures for each of your recipes and pictures for each of these recipes. I don't provide them. Um, I strongly urge you to read through all the instructions before you start so that you know what I'm looking for. Um, watch the video. I go through it. Again, I don't go step by step. Uh, a lot of this stuff is stuff you've done with the other word assignments that you've done and some of it uh, some of it's new, and I go through some of the tips in the video and here in the instructions. But what you're going to do is um, you're going to be changing the theme. Uh, you're going to be adding a heading style. You're going to be adding pictures. Now, for this particular assignment, I do want the pictures of particular kind. 
I want the recipe to fit on one page. If you're going to copy and paste recipes from the internet, make sure you clean the recipes up. Um, I don't want to see redundant links. You're going to get counted off if it's just copy and pasted and you haven't gone to any work to clean up that recipe because you want to just copy the text only if you're going to be doing that. Each recipe is going to look um, a little same and you're going to be using styles. All of your headings are going to be the heading one style. All of your recipe names are going to be the heading two style. Pictures will be just the normal style. And that's where I see a lot of people mess up. And then you're going to be creating a table of contents. So let me bring up the completed my completed cookbook here for this particular assignment. Uh, find it. All right, so you're going to be adding a cover page and the cover page comes with a picture you're going to be adding a particular one and it has trees on it and I want you to change that to a picture you can use a real picture of your family or just a picture off the internet this is just a picture off the internet I've got sessions cookbook I'm looking at four generations of my my kids, uh, mine, my mom's generation, and then my grandmother's generation. And you're going to put a little abstract in here. You're going to be making sure you uh, change the information here. Put a little blurb about your family, and then your name, and then CED 115. So you're going to be making some changes to the title page. And you're going to be putting that in here. I think it's under the insert. Yeah, there's the cover page right here. Under the insert, you're going to be putting the integral. Um, table of contents. This is what it's going to look like. Now, where do I get this information from? In my recipes, the main dishes are all the heading one style. The recipe headings themselves or the heading two styles. Now, what I've had some people do because um, you change the heading styles and then I have you add a blank line. And so, what happens sometimes is when people add a blank line, their pictures, instead of being a normal style, become a heading one style. Okay? And when that happens, when you do your table of contents, you end up with pictures in your table of contents or maybe a blank line in your table of contents and you don't want that. So what you have to do if your table of contents has something in it besides just your main dishes and your the main headings and your recipes then you need to find out. I need to go find this picture in my document and I need to change that to the normal style. Then I need to go back to my table of contents, click in it, and then update table, update entire table to fix it. So make sure your table of contents is correct. But that is usually what happens. You've um, just entered in the incorrect style. And it's something that's easy to do. But you're, on your table of contents, how what appears in the table of content, contents is based on the styles. 
So if you've got something in here you don't want in here, or if there's something in here that's misspelled, then you need to go back to that place in the document and you can just click on it. I just control click here. It's going to take me to that recipe. Okay, you can see I've just got a simple recipe and that's what I want you to do is create your recipes and um, try to fit each recipe on one page. I know I've had some students that end up having uh, recipes that go on two pages and that's fine but just make sure that your next recipe starts on the top of its own page. Okay. I've put together a cookbook like this for my family uh, with family recipes and it was just kind of a lot of fun gathering the family recipes and you can do this with anything and so I hope you have some fun with this particular assignment as well but again it's going to take you a little bit longer so make sure that you don't put off doing your assignments in week four because your assignments in week five are going to take you a little longer as well because you're going to be doing a lot of thinking plus you have the quizzes in both weeks so reach out if you have any questions I'm here for you and uh, watch for my text over the weekend have a good time bye